a very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 8, removing the rust from the crank web and working on the flywheel. The only way to do this successfully, seeing as I can't really separate the crank web from the crankshaft, is to use my very old but very good DeWalt drill. But please note, in order not to stress out any part of the mechanism of the engine, the end of the crankshaft is in the drill chuck, but the engine isn't held down, it's free to move around. So the chuck is not in a position to put any great stress on the end of the crankshaft. I'm cleaning up the crank web initially with a piece of 100 grit emery cloth. And in this clip you will notice one of the problems with the main bearings. One of them is cracked. I think the bolt's gone in at a very strange angle and cracked the corner of the bearing block. Most of these bolts on the main bed plate of the S50 steam engine are dummies that are cast into the main bed plate casting. But at some stage in the life of this engine someone decided to fit proper bolts into the main bearings even though they don't split. And if you look closely, well you don't need to look that closely, you will see that one of them is cracked so I will have to give this some attention before I start to paint the engine. In this clip I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper with some oil to get a good finish on the front part of the crank web. And now I'm working on the reverse side of the crank web in exactly the same way, starting off with 100 grit emery cloth, then I finish the job with a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and once again to make sure the wet or dry sandpaper doesn't get clogged up, I'm using some oil. This is quite a good way of cleaning up crank webs, particularly when you can't remove them from the engine without a lot of grief. From experience, I've found that on these type of engines, often the crank web is threaded onto the crankshaft, but I have a feeling that this one may be pressed on. All that's left to do now is just to remove the dirty oil mixture from the crank web using a cloth. Everything's looking good, time for a cup of tea. I now nearly have a full kit to put an S50 back together after I've painted it. And talking about painting, I need to clean up the flywheel. I'm using the wire brush in my Proxon motor tool as before, and I came across a couple of knobbly bits and I filed them off with a needle file. Over now to my small boxwood lathe and I have the flywheel lightly clamped in the chuck. It's lightly clamped in the chuck because I don't want to mark the centre boss. And also the centre boss is unmachined, so it's not running very true. But it really doesn't matter for this clean up job. In exactly the same way as you've just seen me do with the crank web, I'm starting with 100 grade emery cloth. And because the flywheel is very lightly held in the chuck, I'm applying quite gentle pressure. The outer edge is starting to look much better. I'll speed up the video because this did take a long time. This morning I got a message from one of my Patreon viewers that flagged up in my email box. So as usual I went to answer it, but Patreon wouldn't let me in and didn't know where the message was. Sorry about that Jeff, I'll answer your message in a moment. Health and safety warning. I often mention about how I fold the sandpaper into a thick pad. And it's a good idea, because as you've just seen, the part fell out of the chuck. I'll repeat the sequence. I never put direct pressure on a part using my fingers. I'll repeat the sequence a third time and as you can see, when the flywheel leaves the chuck, my fingers remain intact. Obviously cleaning up the edges of this small flywheel is going to be a problem, so the much easier solution is to just put a bolt through the middle. That way it's securely held in the chuck and it's going nowhere. Back to answering the question from Jeff, one of my Patreon supporters. Making a simple copper boiler isn't really very difficult, making a locomotive boiler is. Coppersmithing is something that doesn't really interest me. I very much appreciate the skill involved in making boilers, but I don't want to do it. I prefer this sort of thing. As you can see, the flywheel is now fairly clean, and the chatter marks in the groove will help to grip the band that drives the dynamo. The flywheel is now ready for painting. Well, not quite. When I first looked at this flywheel, I couldn't figure out how it was being held to the shaft. And Bob, the owner, pointed out that there was a bolt in there that got sheared off many years ago. So once I cleaned up the flywheel, I saw where the bolt was. And here, I'm drilling out the old bolt. First of all, I used a centre drill to make a centre mark exactly in the centre of the bolt. And this clip shows me using a 4BA tapping size twist drill to drill the hole out, ready to thread it. I'm holding the flywheel at an angle in the machine vise, and even though it's not clamped securely in the drilling machine, with the pressure of my fingers on it, plus the fact it can't rotate, makes it a very safe job. The next part of the job is routine. I'm threading it very carefully using a 4BA tap, and fitting an Allen head grub screw. 
The 4BA grub screws are a bit too long and my preferred method for shortening grub screws is on my 1 inch belt sander and in no time at all it shortened the grub screw to just the right length. And now for the last job and by far the easiest I'm cleaning the outer part of the crankshaft using some Scotsbrite. All that needs to be done now apart from the painting is to repair the cracked corner of the outer main bearing. And to do this I will use some JB Weld. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.